So where we left off, we had the bad guys moving on the screen. Now we're going to make the bad guys collide with one another. And this is super duper easy because SpriteKit has collision detection built in through its, its, its physics properties. So all we need to do is make the hero and the bad guys have a physics property and then they will collide as long as we set the collisions properly. So the first thing we need to do in order to make this happen is we need to make the SK scene, our game scene, also inherit from the SK physics contact delegate. And this is actually going to adopt a protocol. And in order to do this, we need to set the physics world contact delegate in our did move view. So we can say self.physics world dot contact delegate is equal to self. So what that's going to do is it's going to say every time there's a contact in the physics world, because we're building physics into this, we don't have to use box2d or anything, run the functions through this class in our physics world. We could set it as another class. We could say, you know, set it as this other class that specifically only handles collisions. But because we have a very simple game, we can do it here. And in order to receive those collisions, we'll create a function called did begin contact. And this function will run when the collision actually happens. If the collision happens, we can say game over is equal to true. It's pretty simple. What we can do, add the collision to both the hero and to the bad guy. So what we'll do is we'll create a collider type. So we'll create an enum for this collider type. And this will be of type unsigned integer 32. And the reason for that is because that's what the collision physics property takes. And I'll show you in a second. So we'll just have two cases here. We'll have one for hero and case two for bad guy. And we want to make it so that hero and bad guy collide with each other, but bad guys don't collide with each other. So what we'll do is when we add Jeff, in order to make him physics enabled, all we have to do is say Jeff dot physics body is equal to a new SK physics body. We want to just give body based on a circle because that's his body shape is a circle. So we'll say his circle of radius is going to be Jeff dot size dot width divided by two because it's the radius, not the diameter. And we have to set a couple of more properties here. So we'll say Jeff dot physics body dot affected by gravity. It's an optional and we know that we just set the optional so we can use an implicitly unwrapped optional only because we just set it up here. We'll say that he's not affected by gravity because we're going to move Jeff on our own. We can say Jeff dot physics body and use the implicitly unwrapped optional. And this is where we set the category bit mask to say that the type of collision he is is slider type dot hero and we want to get the raw value out of that. So the category bitmap actually takes an unsigned integer 32. That's why we needed to make that enum raw value be an unsigned integer 32. Heroes will be a one and we want to say that he collides with lighter type dot bad guy dot raw value and we also want to say that um, his collision bit mask is equal to the bad guy as well so Jeff dot physics body dot collision bit mask is equal to collider type dot bad guy dot raw value and now Jeff will collide with bad guys except he won't quite yet we need to actually set those physics properties on the bad guys themselves so right here where we set the bad guy node we can also add that physics body by adding that physics body you are basically enabling physics to work on that sprite node so we can say bad guy node dot physics body is equal to a new sk physics body and we'll do the same thing circle of radius is equal to the bad guy node dot size dot width divided by two because his radius is the width divided by two the diameter divided by two then we can say bad guy node dot physics body uh, dot affected by gravity is equal to false because we're not going to use the movement of the physics body, we're only going to use its collision properties. So then we can say bad guy node dot physics body 
dot category bitmask. So what kind of collision category is he is the bad guy in? And all of those will be collider type dot bad guy dot raw value. So that's going to be the raw value of that enum, which will be two. And because category bitmask takes unsigned integer 32s, that's why we needed to set the enum as an unsigned integer 32. Then we could say bad guy node dot physics body use the implicitly unwrapped optional contact test bitmask is equal to collider type dot hero dot raw value. So the contact testing will be tested only against heroes or um, things that have the raw value of one because that's the hero raw value and then we want to make him collide only with heroes so we'll just say collision bitmask is equal to the hero as well so now bad guys will only collide with heroes and heroes will only collide with bad guys so we can test this out by saying here print ln collided and because this will set game over to true then in the update function that should that should stop the bad guys from moving as well and you can see that they collided and that actually stopped the thing from moving so now we need to be able to reset the whole game but before we do we can just quickly add in some particle emulation that will come from the bad guy once he gets hit and the way you do this is you file new new file and you want to set in iOS you want to go to resource and you want to go to sprite kit particle file and you can choose any one of these that you want I used a spark so I'm gonna do spark again and we'll just save this as the hit particle dot SKS so now we have the spark that runs every time he gets hit now you could play around with these different values and you can also uh, play with these in code as well um, but what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just leave the hit particle exactly as it is we'll go back to our game scene and we'll say that once the guy gets hit we want to emit those particles. We'll do that in the next tutorial.